guys and welcome back. Today we are almost halfway through September and that means we're almost to October and most of us know there's a lot of art challenges during October. I love this time of year anyways. It's really inspiring but all of that creative communal energy is just really exciting. <laughs> I love this time of year to create artwork. Uh, so yeah, once we get to October there's going to be Inktober, Drawloween, Drawtober. There's countless more. Lots of individual people like to create their own and get people to join in and I definitely want to take part in it. I pretty much always do for years and years I have to some extent. But um, it's been getting me thinking more about what supplies I want to use. I'm still thinking about what the actual scope of what I want to get out of Inktober slash Drawloween, Drawtober this year for me will be, um, but I figured today we could play with some of the potential mediums, tools that I'm thinking about using during Inktober. I think that this year I'm going to go a lot lighter with the restrictions that I give myself. Over the past couple of years, I have created a very large rigid project out of it, which meant that each piece had to be created with the same dimensions and the same finish level and the same mediums and very similar looks. And this year I think that I want to open it up to be a little bit more experimenting, exploratory, but that's still kind of up for debate. So we'll talk about that more in the future as we get closer and as I decide more, but today we're going to play with some, some new tools. I've been really, really wanting to draw more with a fountain pen and I have actually a bunch of them which is really nice. I have a big collection. My husband actually does but I can borrow them. And this is probably the one that I'll end up using today. Uh, yeah I'm not sure if it has much of a flex to it but it is really really pretty at least. So we're gonna use this. We're gonna play with an old sketch that I've had and I have a couple inks that we'll play with. This one's brown. This one's green. I think we'll just uh, swatch them and play with them and then I'll pick which one I want to put in the ink or in the pen since it's kind of an ordeal to put it in and then clean it and take it out. So I'll choose one and then we'll go from there. But yeah, I, I have been wanting to do this for a really long time. So that'll be really fun. I don't actually have any black fountain pen ink, which is really funny. So I might, if I love this process, I might end up getting like a warm black that I can use for Inktober to go forward, but we'll see. But as I was testing out these inks, I was mixing a few different ones together. I don't really know why I did that. I just had a couple that I was thinking about putting in the pen and I just, just let them mingle together. So I had this green and a brown, but the brown actually ended up being really red. It was a very red brown. And I liked the mixture of the two together. The green really subdued the brown, so it became a bit more of like a sepia, something that was more, more neutral. And I liked that a lot more. So I guess by mixing them together, it gave me a chance to play with how the colors could interact and seeing at what point between the two I was most happy with. And yeah, I liked that more, more subdued brown. I love that actually. But today I have very exciting news, at least I think it's extremely exciting. Last year I created an art book called Memento Mori for Inktober. It was one of the, well, it was the biggest Inktober project I have ever taken on. I did an ink illustration for each of the days and then I colorized it and I ran a Kickstarter for it. So thank you everybody who helped back the Kickstarter and make it a reality, but it was it was the biggest Inktober project I've done. And I can finally say that it is available at my shop as well. So anyone who didn't get it during the Kickstarter, she's available and you can get that over at my shop. There's a link down in the description that'll take you over there, but I'm extremely proud of how it turned out. It has metallic gold foiling details on the cover, which was one of the stretch goals we reached during the Kickstarter. But the interior is all in color this time. Oh, I'm just, I'm so happy with how it turned out. And I'm so happy to be able to finally put it up on the shop and have it widely available. So again, that link will be down in the description. And I also get to release the Grim enamel pin that I created for the Kickstarter. This is probably my favorite pin I've ever made. I really love the design of this one, but 
But yeah, this is available there as well. And my double-sided acrylic charm is also available. And I, I'm just really pleased to be able to offer these to everybody. But again, that link is down in the description. It'll take you over to my shop where you can check. Them. One thing to remember, if you do happen to end up having fountain pen ink or buying fountain pen ink for this, it is not waterproof. It is super reactivatable, which totally makes sense. If you put it in a pen, you want to be able to wash it out. But it does mean if you want to do any sort of ink wash type thing and line work, you definitely want to start with the ink wash and then do the line work. You can actually create some really interesting effects with putting down line work and then re-wetting it and letting it bleed and blending it out, but it will not be crisp anymore. And you do have to be pretty controlled if you're going to do something along those lines. So that's just something to keep in mind is that it will absolutely reactivate, but it does open up a lot of room for really interesting techniques. I think it would be really fun to explore that a little bit more where I could potentially put down like washes of ink and then splatter water on top of the dried ink wash and see what would happen there and just rework some textures. I, I don't know. It's just really interesting how it does behave very different from different types of ink and watercolors, even though it seems very similar and the, the outcome looks pretty similar to a lot of things that you can achieve with watercolors and inks. And uh, it does still have its own kind of flavor, which is fun. I love being able to play a little bit with the, the differences in different mediums. But yeah, so for my little test run, I'm starting with some, some basic ink washes. I'm applying a little bit more of a, a darker ink wash to the background and then adding a little bit of a light wash to where hair is. This is just really fun to play with. I love watching the fountain pen ink as it like mixes with the water for the wet on wet technique that I'm doing. It spreads so quickly. Some watercolor pigments do that, but not all of them. And this just really enjoys the water. So it's fun to play with it. It's just such a pleasure, but, but it's interesting too. I, I need to look it up actually. I, I think that it might be dye based. I'm not sure if it's pigment based, but in any case, when you look at it in person, fountain pen ink looks so incredibly smooth. So unlike watercolor where if it creates kind of this really textural effect where it bleeds out, sometimes you can see the individual particles, those little pigments that make up the paint. And that can be a really amazing, cool thing on its own where it granulates like that. But with these fountain pen inks, it has such a smooth texture to it, even when it creates these textures that, uh, that bleed out this wet on wet texture. It's kind of hard to describe. If you see it in person, you would know what I'm talking about, where there's just this like buttery smoothness to it. And I love it. I think it just is so pretty. It's really fun to look at. It just has this like luscious quality to it. So going into this, I knew that I would probably struggle with finding the balance between more expressive loose line work and a certain level of control so that I could get certain details. That's something that I usually struggle with when I'm using a tool like this that tends to lean in the direction that allows for more expressivity. Uh, so yeah, I did struggle with it and that's okay. I think that this pen actually isn't the one for that perfect balance for me. I think the nib is a little bit too broad to be able to do really controlled small details. And I'm going to mostly do pretty small pieces during Inktober. So, so this one's not quite the right one. I won't be able to get the level of detail without I just won't be able to get the detail that I want without being as precise. So, so yeah, I think I'm going to go back to my drawer pens and look through it and potentially, hopefully find one that has a finer nib and possibly one with a little bit of flex to it. We'll see what I have, but this was really fun to play with for this little practice run. And thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out with me while I play with some new mediums, well, new inks, new tools, new fountain pens. 
uh, yeah, I cannot wait to get into some of these art challenges this fall time and just more art for fall. But anyways, don't forget to Memento Mori is available at my shop and the enamel pin and the acrylic charm. There's a link in the description that'll take you over there. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.